There was an incredible news story this week, which was kicked off by an ABC radio journalist, Isabel Rowe, who noticed Greens leader Adam Bant had removed the Australian flag from a press conference this week. It was an interesting observation from an ABC journalist of all people, and it created a firestorm around Bant's decision, with the Greens leader having to explain what on earth he was thinking. You chose not to stand in front of the Australian flag. Why is that? Well, I think we've got a lot of work to do in this country to tell the truth, time to understand that the uh, history of this country and the symbols that represent the history of this country are very hurtful to the First Nations people of this country. Yes, Bant thinks Australia is too broken a country to stand in front of our flag. And apparently, he's been actively hiding the Aussie flag from press conferences for years. The backlash was swift, prompting this from Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. He needs to think about uh, the responses that have been made and reconsider his position and work to promote unity and work to promote reconciliation. Well said, Prime Minister. This is something we should all be able to agree on. But the Greens didn't seem to care what the public and media reaction was to their act of disrespect against our country. Amazingly, I find myself in full agreement with the project's lineup, who put pressure back on Senator Lydia Thorpe in a tense interview. That flag does not represent me as it has connotations to invasion and dispossession and it's associated with the mass murders of many Aboriginal women, men and children. If you want to make that argument, couldn't you say the same thing exactly in those terms of the Australian Parliament in which you serve? Absolutely. That's why I'm there. I'm there to infiltrate. Wait, infiltrate the political system? What a divisive and disturbing thing to say. And good on Walid Ali for pushing back against this radical argument by suggesting that Thorpe and Bant were part of the very system they despise. It was also a hypocrisy noted by the very people these power-hungry politicians should be thanking. Our veterans, our serving soldiers. One man, Vietnam War hero Michael Von Berg, wrote to me this week to express his hurt and his anger at the Greens Party political stunt. His letter was so beautifully written that we splashed it on the front of skynews.com.au. He wrote, on behalf of our membership and the veterans community and their families, your poor and pathetic publicity stunt of dishonouring our Australian national flag is a disgrace and deserves condemnation. Not only is it an insult to the nation broadly, but to every serviceman and woman who has proudly served this country under our flag in war and peace but the many who have paid the ultimate sacrifice and laid to rest with the Australian national flag draped on their coffin. Now, I have to say, watching the feedback from our viewers and readers, it made it clear to me just how disappointed Australians were. And as Michael put it on air later that day, this is a vulnerable community which does not deserve these sorts of media stunts. Adam Bant, take note of these words. Have you had much feedback from from your your counterpart in the veteran community? Oh, my phone's been running hot. And what is a, what is a real concern? I mean, the anger and resentment, we all know that they are triggers for PTSD. And here we are currently in the midst of a Royal Commission on Defence and Veteran Suicide. And, and we know what these triggers, we know what anger does, and we have a politician who pulls this stunt without any consideration to the effect that it may have or the sensitivities associated with it. Sophie, very keen to hear your take of this, this situation. What did you make of, of the backlash to it? Do you think it will get through to the Greens or do you think they're really just playing up to their base? It's a clever media tactic to really galvanise that radical base that gets them elected. Well, this is exactly what they, what they want, Jack. They want us talking about this. So I believe it was a media stunt. It was obviously a successful media stunt because it was all over the headlines. It was in many news services and newspapers. Uh, I'm concerned that it's dividing this country. It's not unifying this country. 
and it's deeply offensive to many Australians to remove the Australian flag and something that I believe is totally unnecessary. But this is what the Greens set out to do. They, they seem to uh, pride themselves in division and this is exactly what they achieved by removing the Australian flag from that press conference. And I thought Waleed uh, was very good in his interview with the project. Uh, but, of course, the Twitterati went to town on him and said his line of questioning of Lydia thought was inappropriate. So that's always mm -hmm. a good sign. When Twitter's outraged, it's usually something that's a good thing because it's heavily left and I think it's unmeasured. And I think there's a lot of people on there who are not uh, level-headed in their commentary that they do make on social media. But I think this is incredibly, incredibly divisive and a shameful episode. Yeah, and James, Sophie makes some really good points about, mm. about social media and the role it mm. plays. All you have to do is listen to this old digger who, who has won, won medals for, for fighting back and saving his platoon, someone who's put his life on the line for the country, for what the flag means to him. You have to listen to these people when you're a politician. And then Twitter and Adam Bant and, the, and these honestly really crazy people they run off with it and they seem so possessed by whatever ideological persuasion is guiding them on that day that they don't understand that this is real people that are affecting with these decisions yeah well look i'd rather take uh, one of our friends there from the rar than uh, than a thousand people on twitter but putting that aside though let's look at this from another angle <clears throat> When people tell you what they are, believe them, okay? When, and when you've got a problem, you need to name it and acknowledge it. I think that Adam Bant and Lydia Thorpe have done the country a great service because now we actually know what a lot of us, us myself included, have long suspected that the Greens and the far left of this country are not actually in any way interested in improving this country uh, you know, which has flaws as every nation does, but instead are interested entirely in dividing it and running it down. That's all this is about. This is all about this continuing campaign that we see not just in Green's press conferences, but we see it elsewhere. We've seen it in the whole fight over the flag on the Harbour Bridge. We've seen it in academia and in the schools where, through the cross-curricular uh, priorities, students are told that Australia as it is isn't good enough, it isn't uh, eco-sensitive enough, it isn't Asian enough, it isn't indigenously sensitive enough through all of these things. All of these things are all designed to run down the country. Now, Adam Band and Lydia Thorpe have finally come out and said, yes, their job is to run down the country. Believe them and act accordingly. That's what I say.